Hey guys, I have come to Bunnings, which is like a warehouse store and we're just gonna see what kind of plants they have. It's only been in the recent years, the Bunnings warehouse has expanded their indoor plant range. Sometimes you can find some rare gems, but mostly you can score some affordable and common house plants. I'm going to do my best to label as many of these plants as possible. Most of the time at Bunnings, you'll see a nice houseplant and you'll wonder what it is. But when you look at the label, it'll be extremely vague like this one. And just say philodendron. This is in fact the philodendron iridescens, right beside some peace lilies. The philodendron bipenifolium is already mounted on a pole, so this can save you a lot of time and energy if you don't want to make your own poles for your climbing plants. Phalaenopsis orchids seem to be a go-to for Bunnings Warehouse and other grocery stores. They do have gorgeous flowers, but I've seen plenty of them suffer from rot because of the suffocating plastic cup filled with sphagnum moss. Now this was labelled as silver pothos, but the pattern of the leaf did look quite similar to a Scandapsis exotica, with this mottled silver and green pattern. It's just interesting because this one was also labelled silver pothos, but it has a more silvery green splotchy pattern like the Scandapsis pictus. The Philodendron Brazil has got a little bamboo ladder trellis to support it. The leaves have a striking lime green variegation. Now I'm no expert in peperomias, but I was quite impressed with the variety of peperomias they had available. This peperomia pink lady didn't have very much pink variegation on it. But if you gave it a bit more indirect light, I'm sure the new leaves would come out with a bit more pink. I actually had one of these Peperomia mini watermelons some time ago, and it was doing super well at first, and then it suddenly died. Surprisingly, the Peperomia pastrata at Bunnings was really full and looked super happy. Bunnings also had some great selection of pots too. They even came with drainage holes. For those who have more of a green thumb for the outdoor gardens, they even sold these bulbs and packets for various flowers, so you could just plonk them straight into the ground when springtime rolled around. Look at this party mix of ferns. These ready-made terrariums were very pretty, apart from those sad looking plants inside. And can someone tell me why they've chosen to imprison this fern in a bottle? To be honest, you could definitely see that some of these plants were quite neglected or just plain dead. But I do want to show you some of the cooler plants that I spotted at Bunnings Warehouse like this Alocasia stingray. Here's a Hoya pubicalic silver, but with not as much splash on the leaves. This crispy wave fern was really cute. String of pearls, but to me it looked more like edamame beans. Philodendron silver sword. Raphidophora decursiva, Monstera siltipicana, Epipremnum pinnatum cebu blue pothos. The Syngonium fantasy here didn't have very much variegation, but the Philodendron squamiferum with a yellowing leaf, it was mostly cute. I do like the red hairs that it has along the stem. I was shocked to find this Philodendron Splendid at Bunnings Warehouse. It's a hybrid cross between a Melanochrysum and a Varicosum. 
is going for about $60 and unfortunately the state of the plant was quite dismal. If you're up for the challenge though, by all means. Bunnings did have a very juicy looking begonia. Stunning leaf patterns. There was this very happy looking alocasia poly as well. Now I've heard that they tend to be magnets for spider mites, um, but it's going for $20.81. The Philodendron Birkin actually produces more and more variegated leaves with each new shoot. Just look at this coleus, it reminded me of an amoeba. Overall I am actually very impressed with the Bunnings houseplant variety and options. In terms of quality it's probably not the best. Now we're off to the local plant nursery which has a very gorgeous collection.